How can a leader win an election with nearly 100% of the vote? This overwhelming victory has raised eyebrows worldwide. In this video, we will explore the nature of elections in North Korea, examine the mechanisms of control and propaganda, and discuss the implications for North Korean society and international relations. The key question we aim to answer, are these election results a true reflection of the people's will, or is there more than meets the eye? In North Korea, the facade of democratic elections is maintained, but the reality is a meticulously orchestrated process controlled by a single entity, the Workers' Party of Korea. As a one-party state, North Korea presents the image of a democratic system where citizens supposedly have the right to vote. However, the outcome of these elections is predetermined, ensuring that Kim Jong-un or his party always emerge victorious with near total support. This system is designed not to reflect the will of the people, but to reinforce the absolute power of the ruling party. In these elections, there are no real opposition candidates or parties. The Workers' Party of Korea, the sole political force, dominates all aspects of governance and public life, leaving no room for political pluralism or debate. The candidates presented to the public are either members of the Workers' Party or independents, who have been endorsed by the party ensuring that all potential office holders align with party ideologies. This lack of genuine competition results in elections where the outcomes are known in advance. On election day, voters are presented with a single name on the ballot for each position. The only choice available to the voter is to approve or disapprove of the candidate, with most choosing approval, either out of support for the regime or due to the pressures and expectations set by the state. The high voter turnout and overwhelming approval rates are often touted by North Korean media as evidence of the regime's legitimacy and the people's allegiance to their leader. However, these numbers do not reflect genuine democratic engagement, but are a result of a controlled and coercive political environment where dissent is not tolerated. Through this system, the Workers' Party ensures that its power remains unchallenged, using elections not as a tool for expression or change, but as a mechanism to maintain control and project a semblance of legitimacy both domestically and internationally. The illusion of democratic elections in North Korea is thus a critical component of the state's political strategy, masking the authoritarian reality under the guise of electoral participation. In North Korea, the mechanisms of control and propaganda are sophisticated and pervasive, ensuring that the state maintains an iron grip on both the political landscape and the public consciousness. This control starts with the coercion into voting, a process heavily monitored and enforced by local officials. Each citizen is expected to vote and abstention or dissent is not merely frowned upon, but can be interpreted as an act of rebellion against the state. Surveillance is omnipresent with local committees and informants ensuring that everyone participates in the electoral process. The power of propaganda in North Korea cannot be overstated. The state runs an extensive propaganda machine that glorifies Kim Jong-un and the ruling Workers' Party. Large-scale propaganda campaigns portray them as benevolent and wise leaders, indispensable to the nation's prosperity and stability. This portrayal is consistent across all media platforms, which are state-controlled, ensuring that the populace is exposed to a singular, government-approved narrative. Portraits of Kim Jong-un along with his father and grandfather, are ubiquitous, serving as a constant reminder of the leadership's omnipresence in daily life. Educational systems and public events further reinforce this image, embedding the leadership's cult of personality deeply within the cultural fabric of the country. Control over media and information is absolute in North Korea. The government ensures that all news and information support state policies and portray the leadership in a positive light. Access to the internet is heavily restricted to the elite and is closely monitored, while the general population is kept isolated from global news. Radios and televisions are pre-tuned to government stations, and tampering with them is a punishable offense. This control over information effectively prevents any dissenting views from reaching the public, ensuring that the state's narrative remains unchallenged. Through these methods, North Korea not only ensures the outcome of its elections, but also maintains a facade of legitimacy and adoration for its leadership, both crucial for the regime's survival. The supreme leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, is more than just a political figure. He is the embodiment of the nation's strength, prosperity, and stability. This perception is no accident, but a carefully crafted image, built on the legacy of his father, Kim Jong-il, and his grandfather, Kim Il-sung. 
The cult of personality surrounding the Kim family is deeply ingrained in North Korean society. This is not merely a result of state propaganda, but is a key aspect of the regime's strategy to maintain control and legitimacy. Kim Jong-un, following in the footsteps of his predecessors, is portrayed as a benevolent and wise leader, indispensable for the nation's success. His image is omnipresent in North Korean life, from portraits in public spaces to stories of his achievements in the state-controlled media. The portrayal of Kim Jong-un extends beyond the political realm. He is often depicted as a man of the people visiting farms, factories, and military bases, always shown as deeply concerned about the welfare of the people. His leadership is framed as a symbol of stability in a world fraught with external threats, with the state media often attributing the nation's survival and resistance against foreign powers to his strategic acumen. This narrative creates a perception that any criticism or opposition to Kim Jong-un is not just a political dissent, but an act against the nation itself. The cult of personality surrounding Kim Jong-un is not just about adulation. It's a tool of control, a means to suppress dissent, and a strategy to maintain the illusion of unanimous support for the regime. Understanding this is crucial to comprehending the nature of North Korean elections and the role of the Workers' Party within the state machinery. In this segment, we delve into the stark contrast between North Korean elections and democratic elections around the world. In democratic systems, the fundamental principles of free and fair elections include multiple political parties, transparency, and independent oversight, elements starkly absent in North Korea. In countries like the United States, Germany, or India, elections are competitive events where multiple parties and candidates vie for public approval. These candidates often have radically different views and policies, offering voters a genuine choice. The process is monitored by independent bodies and observed by international organizations to ensure fairness and transparency. Contrast this with North Korea, where the electoral system operates under a veil of democracy, but in reality is tightly controlled by the Workers' Party. There is no competition, as all candidates are from the same party or approved independents. The concept of voter choice is virtually non-existent, replaced by a system where ballots typically feature just one candidate. Voters' primary role is to approve these pre-selected candidates, with disapproval being both rare and perilous. Moreover, while democratic elections encourage open debate and scrutiny of candidates, North Korean elections are shrouded in secrecy, with no independent oversight. The state-controlled media promotes a narrative that glorifies the existing regime and suppresses any form of dissent or criticism. This results in elections that are not just non-competitive, but are also an exercise in reinforcing the existing power structure. The absence of transparency in North Korea extends to the lack of free press and freedom of speech, fundamental components of democratic societies that ensure leaders are accountable to the people. In democratic nations, the media plays a crucial role in questioning politicians, uncovering scandals, and ensuring that the public is well informed. In summary, while democratic elections are designed to reflect the will of the people, ensuring leadership accountability and facilitating peaceful power transitions, North Korean elections serve as a mechanism to maintain control and project a facade of legitimacy, both domestically and internationally. This comparison not only highlights the deficiencies in the North Korean system, but also underscores the value of democratic principles in governance. In North Korea, the omnipresent influence of state propaganda shapes every facet of society. From childhood, citizens are inundated with a narrative that glorifies the regime and its leaders while vilifying the outside world. This constant stream of propaganda serves not just to inform, but to indoctrinate. It molds public perception, ensuring that the regime's narratives are not only heard, but internalized by the populace. The effect of this relentless propaganda is profound. It creates a reality where the state is the sole arbiter of truth and the supreme leader is infallible. In schools, children are taught that their leader is almost divine, a protector and benefactor. This narrative is reinforced through all media channels, all of which are controlled by the state. Television, radio, and newspapers consistently portray the Supreme Leader and the Workers' Party as heroic, creating a carefully curated image that is rarely questioned publicly. However, the role of fear and surveillance is equally crucial in maintaining this controlled society. North Korea's government employs an extensive network of informants and a pervasive surveillance system to monitor its citizens. 
Fear of punishment for dissent is palpable and serves as a powerful deterrent against any deviation from the party line. The mere act of questioning the regime or accessing unapproved information can lead to severe repercussions, not just for the individual involved, but often for their entire family. This creates an environment where compliance is the safest path. Moreover, the public's apparent unanimous support for the regime during elections is a direct outcome of this culture of fear and control. The high voter turnout and the near total approval rates for pre-selected candidates are less an indication of genuine political support and more a reflection of a populace that is acutely aware of the consequences of dissent. In this way, elections become not just a political exercise, but a ritual of affirmation for the regime's power and a demonstration of the futility of resistance. Through the combination of propaganda, fear, and surveillance, the North Korean regime not only maintains its grip on power, but also shapes the very identity and beliefs of its people. The impact on society is all-encompassing, leaving little room for individual thought or opposition. This system ensures not only the survival of the regime, but also the perpetuation of its narrative, deep within the social fabric of North Korea. As the world watches North Korea's electoral process, the international implications are profound and multifaceted. The perception of North Korean elections significantly impacts diplomatic relations and international negotiations, often casting a long shadow over discussions on regional security and human rights. To the global community, these elections are a stark reminder of the lack of political freedom and the oppressive nature of the regime. Countries engaging in diplomacy with North Korea frequently face a paradox. On one hand, they must address the strategic concerns posed by North Korea's nuclear ambitions and its unpredictable foreign policy. On the other, there is an ethical imperative to challenge the human rights violations and the absence of political pluralism. This dual challenge complicates diplomatic efforts, as nations must balance their security interests with their commitment to human rights. The international community, including bodies like the United Nations, has expressed deep concerns about the orchestrated nature of North Korean elections. These concerns are often highlighted in international forums and reports, emphasizing the lack of genuine democratic processes and the suppression of dissent. The elections serve not only as a mechanism for maintaining control within the country, but also as a tool for the regime to project an image of legitimacy and sovereignty to the outside world. This facade complicates international responses to North Korea. Economic sanctions, aimed at curbing the regime's nuclear program, must be weighed against the potential worsening of the humanitarian situation within the country. Moreover, the perception of a single, unopposed political entity in North Korea stifles the possibility of engaging with alternative voices that might advocate for change from within. Furthermore, the international legal and ethical implications of engaging with a regime that so blatantly disregards the principles of free and fair elections are significant. These engagements are often criticized by human rights organizations, which argue that negotiating with North Korea without addressing its internal political oppression may inadvertently legitimize the regime's actions. In conclusion, the way the world perceives and reacts to North Korean elections is not just a matter of diplomatic protocol or strategic calculation. It is a profound statement on the global commitment to democratic values and human rights. Each election cycle in North Korea thus resonates far beyond its borders, influencing international policies and shaping the dynamics of global diplomacy. In exploring the depths of North Korean elections, it's crucial to peel back the layers of what appears to be a democratic process. At first glance, the presence of elections might suggest a form of voter choice and political engagement. However, the reality is starkly different and deserves a closer examination. In North Korea, the concept of voter choice is a carefully constructed myth. The elections are orchestrated to ensure a unanimous display of support for the regime and its policies. The voters are presented with only one candidate per seat, all of whom are either members of or endorsed by the Workers' Party of Korea. This eliminates any possibility of electoral competition or opposition. Moreover, the act of voting itself is not private but public, where casting a ballot against the sole candidate can be seen as an act of defiance against the state. This public voting process serves as a mechanism of surveillance and control, ensuring that dissent is both rare and risky. Reports from defectors and international observers suggest that abstaining or voting no is a choice fraught with potential repercussions. 
including surveillance, discrimination, and even punishment. This coerces the populace into a facade of unanimous approval, which the North Korean government then uses to legitimize its rule both domestically and internationally. The absence of real electoral choice extends beyond just the mechanics of voting. It permeates the entire political atmosphere of the country. The government's tight control over information and the lack of a free press ensure that only state-approved narratives reach the public. This control over information restricts the citizens' ability to make informed decisions or develop opinions that diverge from the party line. The portrayal of the Supreme Leader and the Workers' Party in state media further cements their unchallenged authority and the illusion of their benevolent rule. In conclusion, the electoral process in North Korea is a critical element of the state's control apparatus, designed to maintain an illusion of legitimacy and suppress any seeds of dissent. Understanding this facade is essential for comprehending the broader implications of governance and control in North Korea and recognizing the profound absence of genuine democratic practices. This insight into the North Korean electoral system challenges us to reflect on the broader implications of such controlled political environments and their impact on regional and global stability. Dive into the heart of North Korea's political system. In an attempt to understand the enigmatic workings of this isolated nation, it's essential to start with its governmental structure and electoral system. North Korea, officially known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, is led by a single party, the Workers' Party of Korea. The government is structured around this party which dominates all branches of governance, ensuring that every political action aligns with its ideologies. At the core of North Korea's political process are its elections, which on the surface appear to be democratic. Every few years, citizens are called to vote for representatives in the Supreme People's Assembly. However, the reality is starkly different from democratic norms. All candidates in these elections come from the Workers' Party or are independents who are endorsed by the party. This means that there's no opposition to challenge the status quo, leading to elections where outcomes are essentially predetermined. The concept of show elections becomes relevant here. These are elections where the outcome is already decided and the process is merely a show to project an image of democracy. In North Korea, the ballots typically feature a single candidate for each position, and voters have the option to approve or disapprove. Reports suggest that voter turnout is near 100 percent, and approval for the given candidates is overwhelmingly high. This is a clear indication of the orchestrated nature of these elections. The process is tightly controlled with no room for dissent or genuine political competition. The role of the Workers' Party in these elections cannot be overstated. It is not merely a political party but an omnipresent force in North Korean life, guiding not only the government but also the economic and social realms. The absence of any opposing political force ensures that the Workers' Party's power remains unchallenged and absolute. With no opposing candidates, the concept of choice seems to be purely theoretical in North Korea. The elections, rather than being a tool for the people to choose their leaders, are a mechanism for the regime to maintain control and project a facade of legitimacy to the outside world. Now let's pivot and compare these practices with democratic elections around the world. In a true democracy, an election is more than just a formal process. It embodies the principles of transparency, competitiveness, and fairness. These elements are what differentiate a democracy from other forms of governance. Transparency is the cornerstone of a democratic election. It ensures that the electoral process is open and accessible to scrutiny. This means that the actions of the candidates, the voting process, and the counting of votes are all open for public viewing and inspection. It is a guard against the manipulation of results and promotes trust in the system. Competitiveness, on the other hand, is what gives voters a real choice. In a democratic election, multiple political parties or candidates vie for public office. They present their respective platforms and policies, giving voters the opportunity to choose the one that best aligns with their beliefs and aspirations. This is a far cry from a one-party system where the outcome is predetermined. Fairness ensures that all votes carry equal weight and every citizen, regardless of their social standing or wealth, has an equal say in the electoral process. This is enforced through mechanisms like secret ballots, which protect voters from intimidation and influence, and independent electoral bodies, which oversee the entire process to ensure it is conducted fairly and impartially. Beyond these principles, a vibrant democracy also values the role of media and public opinion. 
The media serves as a watchdog, scrutinizing the actions of those in power and providing citizens with the information they need to make informed decisions. Meanwhile, public opinion, often shaped by lively debates and discussions, helps steer the direction of policies and holds leaders accountable. In democratic nations, elections are battles of ideas and policies, not just a confirmation of power. So, as we delve into the world of contrasting democracies, we begin to see the stark differences between the democratic ideal and the reality of elections in places like North Korea. How does information flow or not flow in North Korea? In North Korea, the flow of information is tightly regulated by the government. The state controls all media outlets, from newspapers and television to radio and online content, ensuring that only government-approved messages reach the public. This control extends to censoring outside media and severely restricting internet access, creating an environment where only the state's narrative prevails. Contrast this with democratic countries where freedom of the press is a cornerstone of society. In these nations, multiple media outlets operate independently of government control, providing a variety of perspectives and critical analysis of political events. This diversity in media ensures that the public has access to a broad spectrum of information, enabling citizens to make informed decisions about their leaders and government policies. The impact of such stringent control of information in North Korea is profound. It shapes public perception molding the populace's views and opinions to align with those of the ruling party. During elections, this manipulation of information ensures that the outcomes are predictable, with the ruling party always emerging victorious. The lack of access to unbiased information means that many North Koreans may not even be fully aware of the nature of their political system or how it contrasts with other governmental structures around the world. Controlled information leads to controlled opinions a key tool in the North Korean political arsenal. What does the world think of North Korea's elections? This question often stirs a pot of mixed reactions, ranging from outright dismissal to cautious scrutiny. Let's delve into how different countries and international bodies perceive and react to what many consider a mere formality rather than a legitimate democratic process. Firstly, the international community largely views North Korea's elections with skepticism. The overwhelming victory margins are often seen as implausible in a genuine democratic setup. Countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, and members of the European Union have frequently criticized these elections, labeling them as undemocratic and calling for increased transparency and freedom for the North Korean people. These nations, along with international watchdogs like the United Nations, often use these election results as a basis for pushing for sanctions and diplomatic isolation. On the other side of the spectrum, some countries maintain a more neutral stance, primarily driven by strategic diplomatic relationships or geopolitical interests. Nations like China and Russia, while not openly endorsing the electoral process in North Korea, often avoid harsh criticism, choosing instead to emphasize stability and peace in the Korean Peninsula. This approach highlights the delicate balance of international diplomacy, where strategic interests often weigh as heavily as ideological alignments. Moreover, global leaders find themselves in a complex dance when dealing with North Korea. Engaging with a nation known for its rigid governance and lack of democratic practices presents a moral and diplomatic quandary. On one hand, there is a universal desire to advocate for human rights and democratic freedoms. On the other, there is the practical necessity of negotiating with North Korea on critical issues like nuclear disarmament and regional security. This dichotomy makes the international response to North Korean elections particularly multifaceted. In conclusion, while many view these elections with skepticism, global diplomacy often treads a complex path of engagement. The reactions and implications of North Korea's electoral process on international relations are testament to the ongoing challenges and strategies in dealing with a nation that sits so distinctly apart from global democratic norms. What have we uncovered about the mysterious political landscape of North Korea? It's clear that elections there do not mirror the democratic processes seen globally, primarily due to the lack of competition and choice. Transparency and public engagement stand as pillars of a thriving democracy, fostering accountability and encouraging civic involvement, which North Korea's system lacks. We look ahead. The future of North Korea's political landscape and the influence of figures like Kim Jong-un remain uncertain. By examining North Korea's electoral facade, we not only understand more about the nation, but also what it takes to form a true democracy.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel History Hub for more insightful videos.